Gone Now on BBC Two with your Master of Ceremonies, Andy Craig. Welcome to a brand new series of Going, Going, Gone, the antiques game that visits the auction houses of Britain. Now, today and over the coming months, we'll be inviting amateur collectors to put their skill and knowledge to the test as they attempt to price a whole range of antiques and collectibles. Then we'll take our cameras back to the auction rooms to see what the objects actually fetched on the day. The contestants will be helped or hindered by our panel. We'll offer three different descriptions and three different prices for each object. Only one is true. Now, will they be able to tell the difference between the fakes and the real thing. All will be revealed when we go back to the auction house to see the objects actually coming under the hammer. In the coming months, we'll have a whole range of objects, from teddy bears to dining chairs and sundials to ceramic tiles. In fact, anything that's collectible. Well, let's meet the panel who'll be doing their best to lead our contestants up the garden path, as it were. Joining us as our new team leader, or should I say, misleader, and who'll be with us for the whole series is someone who's better known for her traveller's tales on Going, Going, Gone. It's more likely to be tall tales and that is Anne Gregg welcome and we're delighted to have you with us nice and to be here. also we're welcoming today Nanette Newman better known uh, of course in theatre film and uh, many leading roles but also she is a collector are you not Nanette I am yes I collect all sorts of odd things something I really like which drives my husband mad he says he's going to divorce me if I if I bring another one into the house are those very old children's school desks you know, the ones that are joined together right. with all the ink stains and the initials and things. Rather prone so to So you've got a few in the house at the moment, have you? <laughs> yes, a few too many in the house. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, back for a new series, Lancashire's national treasure and <laughs> antiques expert to boot. Let's welcome back Mr Eric Knowles. Welcome to you, Eric. Thank you. And uh, let's meet our two contestants for this first programme in the series. We welcome Maggie Wynne. Whereabouts are you from, Maggie? I'm from Diganway in uh, North Wales. Now, you're a collector of what? Port Mary and Pottery. And uh, is that something things. you've been doing for quite a while? Yes, yes, about two years, two and a half years now. What's the piece you brought with you today? This is a joke to commemorate the 35th anniversary of the potteries actually opening. And um, it's one of my favourite pieces. It's a fine looking piece, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're happy to have that with us today, that piece, <laughs> I can tell you. And you're joined by Adrian Wilson. Adrian, you're from Macclesfield in Cheshire and uh, you're a photographer by trade, aren't That's you? That's right. What do you collect? <laughs> That's right. Um, well, I collect uh, quite a few different things, but this is my main collection, which is uh, old textile trademark printing blocks, which were for when they used to send cotton, trade, cotton around the world, and they always used to stamp these things on the front of them so that people could recognise the different brands of cloth. See, a lot of them have been discarded, haven't they, over the years, which is a shame. That's right, it just burnt and thrown away in the canals and rivers and whatever. So. Good for you. So there are contestants. Ten points are at stake on each of the rounds. Uh, I guess you know how to play the game. So let's get to our first auction, and this time we head for Bairns of Exeter, where we find lot 1196. Now, this is extremely ornate looking, isn't it? It's a fabulous looking timepiece, Roman numerals there. The question is, are those real pearls or are they not? And Presumably that will affect the price, will it not, Anne? I should think it would. £8,400, so they're real. Now, there's rather a romantic story with this lovely watch. It was made in the 1930s by Deacon of Knightsbridge, but it was given as an engagement present to a Lady Helen Devereux by Dwight Rothschild. Now, he was one of the American branch of the Rothschild family, the famous bankers. And he was posted to Britain as an intelligence uh, officer and he met this famous socialite, Lady Devereux, and uh, he gave her this watch as an engagement present. She very wisely hung on to it. She didn't give it back to him when the engagement was broken off. And she, in fact, is still alive. She's 80 now and she was the vendor at the auction. So she's got a tidy 8,400, little nest egg. Nice one, yes. A romantic story, that, isn't it? £8,400 <laughs> and tells us it made on the day. Nanette, what are you going to tell us about this piece? Well, actually, this is a cocktail watch. 
and it was made in the 1930s by the great jeweller Cartier and as you can see it is encrusted with jewelry. It's platinum, gold, um, diamonds and pearls on the strap. Really quite beautiful and uh, you know it's interesting Cartier still go on making these sort of designs and of course these pieces really do hold their prices but now this particular watch has a hand missing but nobody need worry about that because if you've got something like that you just flaunt it and ask somebody the time you know you don't care about that so it really is going for a very good price but it is quite exquisitely beautiful it's nine thousand two hundred pounds now Eric what are you going to tell us any truth in any of that well there was a lot of romance there for a man for sure and uh, <laughs> and and there was an awful lot to get in there from Nanette, but let me let me be a little bit more sober about this. Let me bring you down to earth and tell you that it made four hundred pounds, uh, because this watch is actually made from paste, base metal, and glass, and is a wonderful example of just how good costume jewellery can really be. Now it was created actually in the Roaring Twenties, no doubt for some bright young thing, uh, and was was made by the highly respected. Uh, London jeweller called Minoru, M-I-N-O-R-U. And uh, today, costume jewellery like this is very avidly collected. So, £400 and we come down to earth with a bump. So I'm going to recap for you here, Maggie and Adrian. We have uh, this uh, a piece from the Roaring Twenties for one of these bright young things, uh, £400. We have Anne telling us that this is a watch with a real romantic history. I mean, a fascinating story. £8,400, big leap there. And then we have Nanette telling us that this is a piece of... It's actually a Cartier cocktail watch. A beautiful piece from the 1930s with gold, diamonds and pearls. And guess what? £9,200. Now, three uh, very believable descriptions, I would suspect. Maggie, what are you going to do? Well, I think I tend to agree with Anne, because I like the romance of the story. <laughs> £8,400, so it's this, this romantic story made in the 1930s. Adrian, are you going to challenge on this? Uh, yeah, um, I don't think you can use uh, Rothschild's Knights Bridge and the Intelligence Service in, in the same description and get away with it. Um, <laughs> I also don't think Cartier used to make watches where hands dropped off <laughs> after a few years. So I'm going to go with Eric, I think. So Eric, pounds. this is a piece of costume jewellery, yeah. beautifully made, as Eric said, very collectible. £400, big difference in your, your prices. Let's go to the auction, because this is where we find out the truth. The next lot, 1196. 8,000? Yes, 8,000. 8,001? 8,002? 8,003? 8,004? 8,005? 8,400 pounds. On the telephone, eight thousand four hundred pounds. Eight thousand five. Eight thousand five. Eight thousand six. Eight thousand seven. Eight thousand seven. Eight thousand eight. Eight thousand nine. Nine thousand. Nine thousand pounds. Nine one is bid. Nine thousand two. At nine thousand two hundred. Nine thousand two hundred. At nine thousand two hundred. At nine two. You see, if you'd listened closely to what Nanette was telling you, oh. the Cartier watch though it was <laughs> nine thousand two hundred pounds. No yeah. points for anybody at this stage, but Erica, a very very collectible piece and one that presumably people would wear today. Uh, yeah, a big name Cartier it goes without saying, and uh, each one individually built. I mean, if you're going to go for watches, I mean, the, the big names are Cartier, Patek Philippe, and uh, and, and others. And um, I think with something like this. When you buy it, you, of course you're going to wear it, but get your insurance sorted out quick before you do so. OK. Anyway, £9,200 it made on the day. Let's move on to our next auction. And this time we head for Halls of Shrewsbury in Shropshire, where we find Lot 71. And this is it. It's a, a bowl of some description, or a container. Uh, is it metal? Is it wood? What is it made of? And, and what is it for? There you see some of the detail on the site. It looks like metal, doesn't it? Uh, Nanette, tell us about this piece, will you? Well, actually, this is a planter, and uh, it was made in the 18th century. And if you look very closely, you might be able to see a little pattern of fleur-de-lis on it. Uh, it's French. It would probably be found in, um, the, on the terrace of a chateau 
where they would have a group of them or a row of them on pedestals and rather like, unlike kind of all of us today where we go off to the nursery and spend a fortune on plants, there would have been masses of gardeners filling them with the most beautiful roses or sweet smelling flowers. So it is in fact a planter and its uh, price is £260. £260, uh, 18th century we're, we're told by Nanette. Eric, um, what about this piece? What is it? I think this is the first time I'm going to be able to say it's a no, no, Nanette, because this... <laughs> oh, I thought you oh, might you say that. You were waiting for that moment, Eric. I've been waiting for weeks to say that. Years, I think. Yeah. And, <laughs> and now I wish I hadn't. But either way, £220 was the order of the day. This is a four-inch high copper alloy mortar. Um, it's a very good uh, 19th century fake of the real thing. The real thing should really be from the 17th century. Uh, the clue is in the, in, is in the underside, which you can't see, but you'll have to take it from me. It was suspiciously smooth. And um, had the mortar had been used, it would, have, it would have shown an awful lot more wear than it was actually showing on the day. In addition, the exterior has been artificially distressed just to give it the effect of age. So, as you're probably aware, mortars were used for, by apothecaries for, for grinding up medicine and it's missing its pestle, which doesn't help. Um, so it's remarkable, really, that a fake should make £220. Well, it's, this is a, a, a fake, a 19th century fake of a mortar. £220. Now, Anne, uh, what are you going to tell us about this piece? This, in fact, was a metal cup that was found in the ground, hence the fact that it is slightly pitted, but it's not too destroyed because it's been protected by the minerals in the earth all these years. It was found by the vendor in a field very near to where the Battle of Edge Hill was fought, Charles I against the parliamentarians in 1642. The armorial crest on the side would indicate that it probably belonged to someone quite important. It was a celebratory cup, you know, that they put a noggin in and said, jolly well done, chaps, or whatever. So it might have probably belonged to a royalist rather than a Puritan. And the price, Anne? £280. £280 for this celebratory cup there from the reign of Charles I. So, Maggie and Adrian, I'm going to recap again for you. We have uh, Eric telling us that this is a mortar made from a copper alloy. It's, a, it's actually a fake. £220, Eric says it made on the day. And then we had Nanette telling us that this is a French planter from the 18th century. It would grace the terraces. £260. And then Anne has just told us here that this is from the reign of Charles I, one of these celebratory uh, cups that you would have found somewhere near the Battle of Edge Hill at £280. Now, Adrian, it's, uh, it's you to decide. All very plausible, aren't they? Uh, yeah, quite a tough one, this, I think. Um, I'm going to go for uh, Nanette, I think. OK, £260 you'd have bid for that on yep. the day. Are you going to challenge, Maggie? I am, yes. Um, I agree with Anne, again, at £280. Not a lot of difference in your prices. Let's go back to the auction and let's see what it made on the day. Lot 71, 50 pounds, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, 220. 220 pounds on the right here at 220. So, 220. Now, Eric does come out with the odd tall tale now and again, but that was a corker, and it was absolutely true. It was indeed this fake mortar. So, I'm, I'm afraid no points. To, I mean, you know, you, you, it was worth the challenge, but nevertheless, no points at all at this stage. But there's still lots to play for, so don't worry. Now, Eric, why bother faking a mortar, for goodness sake? Well, I think it's really to sort of satisfy the Victorian demand for all things medieval. You know, the, they were going through this sort of Gothic revival period in the sort of 1840s, 1850s and 60s, and um, everything was faked, you know, you name it, they'd fake it. <laughs> All right, OK, let's, uh, let's check the scoreboard, just, you know, just for the heck of it, really. And there we are, we've yet to get off the mark, which just goes to show how good our descriptions are here today. <laughs> anyway, lots to play for. Let's go to our next round. Uh, this time Excellent. we head for Phillips of Edinburgh, and we go to the fine arts sale there, and we see lot 260, and this is it. It's a, a very tall piece, or it appears to be anyway, depending on how big it actually is. It's carved, uh, and there's the base. There you see um, some detail of the piece, sort of animal's feet there on the base. The question is, what is it made of and what is it for? Eric, why don't you start us off this time? Uh, well, it made £420 and um, it's big. It's 56 inches high uh, because this is a rare mid-18th century lighting stand uh, for use on the grand terrace of a fine Italian 
country house. Now, when the family and the guests ate sort of al fresco in the, in the evenings, uh, the servants would place flaming brands in a, in a number of, of these stands to shed a sort of a romantic, flickering light onto the proceedings. So um, the gilding, uh, if you look carefully there, uh, it, it suffered uh, from the heat of the flame, and, um, but a little bit of restoration work could easily restore the stand to its former glory. So £420 was the price paid. So an 18th century outdoor lighting stand, £420. And um, what are you going to tell us about this piece? Well, Eric is very near the truth on this one. It is for lighting, but it doesn't cost as much as that. It cost £260. What it actually is, is a four-foot-high torchair. Now, torchairs were these lovely stands that you put a branched candle holder in. Now, you can just see them flanking a grand stairway or either side of a very important door in a rather grand house. And uh, the interesting thing was that quite often these were made from the footposts of a four-poster bed and much later on were converted into tour shares. But this one is from the 1820s and it cost £260 at the auction. £260 that are tour shares. Uh, that's what Anne tells us. Nanette, what are you going to tell us about this? Well, this is in fact a perfumier which was made in France uh, during the 1800s. Now, during that period, they were very conscious of smells because all the women used to wear exotic perfumes, so did the men as well. But, uh, but a lot of things were very basic in the house, and so they used to like their rooms to smell good. And these things were put in strategic places, in corridors, in the corner of rooms, and a maid would come in and every now and again would fill them with perfume in that little thing at the top. And they would waft around and make everywhere smell nice. And it's very similar to the sort of thing that we buy today, only of course much more expensive. The price for them uh, would be £300. Let me uh, recap for you, Maggie and Adrian. We have uh... And telling us that this is a torchere, a, a candle holder essentially, from uh, the 1820s at £260. We have Nanette, as you've just heard, telling us that this is a, a perfumier uh, in the 1800s, a, a basic air freshener at £300. And Eric tells us that this is an 18th century outdoor lighting stand that perhaps would have belonged to an Italian wealthy family, £420. We're back to you again here, Maggie. What are you going to do? Well, um, I, I think... I believe Anne again. I'm going to go with Anne again. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I go along with the, the fact that it could have been from a bed. So um, I go with Anne at 260. OK, now, are you going to challenge you? No, I'm going to agree Adrian? with Maggie on that one. OK, I mean, there's nothing yeah. to lose, but, you know, if you challenge. But, um, you know, if we've got a no, consensus, think, then um, that's fine by me. Yeah? Yeah. Let's go back to the auction. Let's see what really did happen that day. How much did it make? Got 260, 100 pounds iron bid at 100 and 10, 120, 130, 140. 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, and 20, 240, 260. No? 260 pounds at the very back of the room. Are you all done? At 260 pounds. It had to happen in the end. <laughs> Anne gave you the, uh, the truth. It is a tour share, support for a, basically a candle holder. And you'd rightly say it was actually made from part of a bed. So you're absolutely spot on. At last, we have some points on the other scoreboard, <laughs> which is rather yes. nice. And uh, you agreed anyway, but no points, I'm afraid, for you, Adrian, on, on, okay. that, on that one. Eric, and presumably, if there'd been more than one of these, it would have been a lot more than that, wouldn't it? Yes, I think it would. I think uh, pairs would always be at a premium. And uh, that particular in in instance, um, the gilding was just absolutely nice and mellow. And that's what the, um, that's what the decorators look for. I mean, it's, it is really an interior decorator sort of thing. I don't know of many people who collect tour shares. But nevertheless, £260. Having said that, I don't know many people who collect school desks, so it doesn't go that far, does it? You, you know? do now. I do you now. Look the nice thing about this program, Eric, is it takes all sorts as we it all does. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to our next auction, and this time we head for Sotheby's, and uh, we go there to what was a three-day sale, and we come to lot 1416, and there you see a pair of glasses, twisted stems, and you see that it's etched there at the top of the glass. They seem to be quite stout, glasses, if I can use that word, quite hefty pieces, these. Now, Anne, tell us about these, these two glasses, will you? These are two rather special glasses, Maggie and Adrian. In fact, they, they fetched £820 at the auction. They're not even a pair, but what's very special about them is that they're Jacobite glasses. They were glasses that were used to raise support for the Jacobite cause, 
and they were used to drink a toast to Bonnie Prince Charlie and they went on using these glasses to drink a toast even after the disaster of Culloden. Um, they're actually hand blown and the stem pattern was made by trapping air in the uh, column and then twisting it with tongs. They're absolutely exquisite. Uh, I just love a couple more. And the price then? Price was £820. If you'd had more, there'd have been more, wouldn't it? It would be a lot £820. More. These Jacobite glasses, as Anne tells us. Now, Nanette, anything to do with the Jacobites at all, these? Well, Anne's quite right. They are exquisite and very unusual and very rare because they're uh, a matching pair. Uh, they were, in fact, cordial glasses made in the late 18th century. Cordial was a disgusting, syrupy drink, but very popular at that time for people who didn't drink wine. Now, although they're a matching pair, they're a sort of his and hers, there is one very important difference on them, which if you look closely, you'll see on the stem, because the double knot, which I hope is the right way to pronounce Correct. it, is it? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, which is a double knob on one of the glasses, means that it's the gentleman's glass, and on the lady's glass, there is just one knob. And so they're very unusual, very rare, incredible to find a pair like this. Slight damage, but not very much, and it doesn't affect the price, £950. So, knob twice for the men, not once for the ladies. <laughs> £950, the net tells us. Eric, um, are the knobs important? <laughs> Not in the slightest. <laughs> I, I love that story. I think it's wonderful. Um, but let me let me set you straight. This we're not talking is and hers. Um, we're talking one thousand one hundred pounds, and we're not talking Jacobite glasses either. I mean, I wish I could find a Jacobite glass for how much was it? Eight hundred pounds for two. Let let's get on with the business. Let me tell you, they're two very rare glasses, but they're not a pair. But they're made by the same hand in around about the seventeen twenties. Now they were originally for ale. Now, I know what you're thinking, uh, doesn't look, you wouldn't get very much ale in there, but you've got to remember that ale was a very potent drink, a much stronger drink than the ale that we know today. So it was drunk in small quantities. Now, this is where it gets interesting, because I know a thing or two about these, because each bears a rose on a thorny stem, and that um, are forever being repeated in decorative motifs and the decorative arts, and this is a case in point. As you could well and truly understand, it, at £1,100, I wouldn't be the buyer for this particular um, pair or near pair of glasses. OK, Eric has given us his description of these ale glasses. Let's uh, recap for you, Maggie and Adrian. We have Anne telling us that these are Jacobite glasses from the uh, 1740s used for toasting old Bonnie Prince Charlie at £820. Lynette tells us that they were used for his and hers for drinking cordial and at £950. And Eric, as you've just heard, telling us they were used for drinking ale, these glasses from Yorkshire in the 1720s, £1,100. Adrian, um, you're looking a bit vacant there. I mean, it's <laughs> uh, stumped you, this, hasn't it? So no, no, not at all. Not at I, all? No, no. I think Eric's um, description about the roses is a bit strange. So you've dismissed Eric, have you? Yeah, and I think you drink uh, beer from jugs and uh, yeah. pitchers from okay. small glasses. Uh, and I think I'm going to go for uh, Nanette because it's more of a dainty glass and I, th I think it sort is a pair for a man and a woman. Cordial drinking? Yeah. OK, Very that's cordial. £950. Are you going to challenge Maggie at all? I am, yes. Um, and go, go this for time, it. I think I'm going to go for 1100 I believe, Eric. <laughs> Eric has that, sort of, it has that sort of hint of truth about that's it, does it? it? The ale drinking. <laughs> right, well, let's go to the auction and uh, points are at stake. Let's find out what happened. Got 1416, 620. 650, 680, 700, and 20, 750, 780. In front at 780 pounds, 800, and 20. No, 820 pounds, front row at 820 pounds, and I'm selling at 820 then. Now, you should have stuck with me. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> now, you said, Adrian said he was not flummoxed by this at all, but sadly, you see, you, you didn't get it there in the end. It was uh, not for the I drinking. I didn't mention Anne. You did not. <laughs> no. It wasn't for drinking cordial. It was indeed the Jacobite glasses there from uh, the 1740s, £820. And uh, neither of you get any of the points there, but Eric, um, they were beautiful pieces, weren't they? Yes, they were. They were lovely. I, I wish I'd been there on the day. Um, the, the roses that are, that are on there actually signify the young and the old pretender. And um, it, when it comes to Jacobite glasses, there's a romance attached to uh, anything to do with Bonnie Prince Charlie, but it's the 
portrait glasses, those with a portrait of the, of the prince himself that can really command the big price. I mean, well in excess of a thousand pounds each. But you, just a quick point, ale was a very strong liquid, by the way, and you would have served it in a glass perhaps just a fraction, the, a fraction bigger than the ones we've been looking at there. So there was an element of truth in what I was telling you there. <laughs> you can, and to be fair, you can drink cordial from them, can't you? You can drink cordial from them. So, you know, we were, we were almost there. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, I, well, I had, I had to throw that one in for you. Let's, uh, let's recap on the scores. We have Maggie on ten. Adrian still to get off the mark, but I know he'll have plenty of support from all of the people watching from Macclesfield. And uh, this is where we go into our final round. And this is where, um, Maggie and Adrian, you actually bid against each other for a particular piece and use all of the knowledge that perhaps you've gained over the years from going to the auctions or watching us here. And the piece in question is at Bonhams. And I'm going to take you there now. It's lot 153, and it's actually a Sasha doll made at the Sasha factory in Stockport in Cheshire. So this is close to home for you, Adrian. 1972 it was made, and it's named after the world-famous doll maker who designed her called Sasha Morgenthaler. Sasha Morgenthaler. OK. Now, I think we ought to have a bit of advice from you, Eric, first of all, in bidding for a doll like this. I'm not very big on dolls, uh, not this size anyway. Um, <laughs> but I'm, 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 certainly 60s dolls, um, they've, it's amazing, you know, uh, the price that can be paid for original Barbies, especially when you've got them in their original sort of carrying cases. So the prices can be, can be deceptively high. I'm not saying, I'm not saying they're, they're not too high, uh, but they're, they're a little bit more than you might at first imagine. OK, some sound advice. You get the drift, I think, there. Now, um, Nanette and Anne, why don't you jot down yourself what you would have paid for uh, this Sasha doll on the day? And for you at home, this is what the Sasha doll actually made. Now, what I will tell you, Maggie and Adrian, is that the starting price was £150. And uh, we went up in tens. So, uh, who's going to start me off? I'll start. I'll start at oh. uh, £150. £150, I'm bid. £160. £160. Maggie. 170. 170. 180. 180, I'm bid. 190. 200. 200 pounds. 220. 220, I'm bid from Maggie. Adrian. Um, I'll stick up. Oh, uh, 230. 230, I'm bid from Adrian. I'm staying at 220. 220, I'm bid, and 230 <laughs> from Adrian. Very little in it. <laughs> you need the points, Adrian. <laughs> I'm desperate. You're desperate. Let's <laughs> go back to the auction and let's find out. <laughs> Number 153. And could I start the bidding at 150 pounds? 150 is bid at 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 190. Further bids at 190, 190. Any further bid now, please? 190 pounds. 200 and 10, 220, 230, 250. Here at 250, in front at 250. Continuing at the back, it's 250 down here, right in front now. 250 pounds. So, <laughs> you were not far away, the pair of you, but you were the closest in the end at £230. So, uh, yeah. And as you rightly said, you needed the points, didn't you? So there you go. And uh, let's just find out over here how Anne and... Well, we were all more or less in the same do, area. Do you know she I'm knows a lot so about these. I'm so excited because I used to buy these for my children. They're the most beautiful dolls you've ever seen. And they were, like, expensive then, £20. I've got about seven of these. Right. Not <laughs> only my desk, but my dolls. What about them? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to dust them off and take care well, of them. Well, let's look at the scoreboard and see how we finished Incredible. here today for this first programme. Well, we have Maggie on ten and we also have Adrian on a ten. I think that's a very fair way to finish this particular contest, which means that you will both receive £100 of the vouchers in this delightful gold envelope to help swell your individual collections. Thank you, Thank you for being with us. Enjoyed it? Yes. That's what it's much. all about. Nanette, thanks for being with us as well. Hope you've enjoyed playing. Oh, I certainly have. So <laughs> after this. That's, right. a, that's a bonus for you. And thanks for watching at home. Remember, we're with you uh, twice weekly throughout the autumn and winter. From all of us here on Going, Going, Gone, until next time, it's goodbye. And that second show of the week will be on Friday at 5.30 here on BBC Two.